Have you recently read one of the journal articles calling out earlier puberty in our children and wondering what's going on? Today's episode is for you. Welcome to the Beehive Doc Talks with Dr. Blair Rolnick. As a pediatrician and mother herself, Dr. Rolnick is here to answer your most pressing parenting questions and guide you through the tough spots. Welcome back to Be Kind Pediatrics. For those of you who are new to the show, my name is Dr. Blair Rolnick. I'm a board certified pediatrician and mom myself. On today's episode, we're going to talk about a tag I was recently received in Instagram from Dr. Amy, a local peds dentist, about an article that was published questioning whether children are going through puberty earlier and why that might be happening. So let's dive right in. The first question is, are children going through puberty earlier? So we call early puberty in the medical field precocious puberty. The average age of puberty now in the United States for boys is 9 to 14 years old versus girls 8 to 12 years old. If you compare that to the 1960s, for example, typical onset of puberty for boys was 15. So we definitely know that our children are going through puberty earlier, and that's not just here in the United States. There have been similar studies out of um, Europe, such as in Italy and Denmark, echoing similar findings that we have here in the U.S., which is a trend towards puberty at a younger age. So then the question is, why is this happening? And there are several theories out of there, and I'm just going to start by breaking each one down and the evidence for each. So let's first talk about the most well-studied theory, and that is, is childhood obesity rates affecting early puberty rates? So there have been several studies looking at childhood obesity and its correlation to early onset puberty. This is one example in the um, Journal of Epidemiology published in 2020. This was a cohort study that looked at children who were overweight and found that the more overweight children are, the earlier they had puberty. So that's what we call almost a dose-dependent effect. The higher the BMI, the earlier the onset of the puberty. And again, this study has been echoed across several other studies, so there is likely a link between obesity and early onset puberty. In 2021, in an article in Nature, this article, they were looking at leptin, which is a hormone that is released by our adipose cells um, and helps us feel full. Um, and they found that leptin actually acted on part of the brain that also regulates sexual development in mice. And so that is a good example of a potential explanation between the link of obesity and early onset puberty because leptin is made by adipose cells and people who are overweight tend to have more adipose cells they may be making more leptin, which is affecting some of the reproductive hormones. So obesity alone likely cannot explain the trends we're seeing in early puberty. There was two studies out of Denmark that looked at a cohort of children from 2009 and a cohort of children from 1990. And they found in 1990 and 2009, both of those age ranges were having earlier puberty, 1990 compared to the previous years, and then 2009 compared to 1990. However, the 2009 and the 1990 cohorts had very similar BMIs. So a difference in BMI couldn't explain the difference in puberty onset between the 1990 and the 2009 cohort, meaning likely childhood obesity rates alone are not explaining the phenomenon that we're seeing. So the bottom line on obesity definitely has an effect on early onset puberty, but is probably not a full explanation for the trends that we're seeing. So let's look at some of the other um, more recent data out there. So another really um, budding area of interest right now in research is, are there chemicals potentially in our environment that are affecting our children and their earlier onset of puberty? So let's look at this article from the Journal of Reproductive Health in 2019, because it's probably the most well-quoted study in this area. This journal or research article was really looking at an and looking for if there is an association between phthalates, parabens, and phenols, and the onset of puberty. And they were looking at that exposure specifically as an in utero exposure. So mommies using these products, do their children have earlier onset puberty? Well, the reason they were really looking at these chemicals is because these are common chemicals found in personal care and consumer products. And we know that these three chemicals are what we call endocrine modifying chemicals, meaning they interfere with our hormones. And there was some studies that showed 
that these chemicals affected um, and in animal studies affected an altered puberty. So this journal in particular was looking at the in utero and exposure, and then again, their child's um, timing or onset of puberty. And what they found was there was an association um, in girls, so young women whose mommies were exposed to these chemicals in utero had earlier timing of puberty, but not boys. Other studies have looked at early breast bud development and found that those young women had higher levels of um, urine phthalates, which are, again, chemicals that fall into the category of endocrine um, disruptors, uh, meaning they affect hormones. So the evidence is not very strong, meaning we don't have large randomized control trials really showing a robust association between exposure to these in intrauterine exposure to these chemicals and whether children then go on to develop precocious puberty. And probably we need a little bit more research to decide how much, when is the risk for exposure the greatest, um, and is there a true association. But it's an interesting area of research that looks like something we should probably um, and are hopefully going to see more research on. So the bottom line here on chemicals in our environment is there may be an association, um, and there has been some animal models that help us determine that there is likely an association, but we need more research to prove this and more research to determine if there's a particular time in our development where this exposure to is at greatest risk. Now I'm going to go over the last big category in which there's been kind of budding and emerging research on early puberty in children um, and what might be causing that. So let's talk about stress. This study looked at childhood sexual abuse exposure and early puberty rates um, and they did find that there was an association, but not a causal reason. So there's lots of theories about childhood stress and why that might um, affect puberty and affect our hormones. It looks like there is an association, but we don't know exactly why and what kinds of other stress might be um, also having an association with this. Interestingly, there was a study out of Italy that got a lot of press publishing that they found a significant increase in cases of precocious puberty in girls in the first period of the COVID-19 pandemic. Again, they found that the cases were increasing and they published that data, but they didn't find a reason why. So was it home isolation? Was it the stress of the COVID-19 pandemic? Perhaps were the children not getting as much physical exercise and was that affecting their hormones? There's lots of different theories here. So really my bottom line on stress is um, right now, probably this is mostly at a state where we call it uh, mostly hypothesis, but we don't have really good evidence on why and why that might be, um, why there might be an association and why there were increased cases in the COVID-19 pandemic. So why do we care so much about earlier onsets of puberty or precocious puberty? One, there has been some studies and we're still learning a lot about how precocious puberty affects children and how it affects them later in life as adults. But there are some studies that link long-term health risks to early onset puberty. And those include increased risks of breast cancer, testicular cancer, obesity, cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, and perhaps shorter stature. However, all of these risks really need a lot more research. None of them have had great, um, have not had robust evidence to show that early onset puberty definitely causes these risks. But one thing we do know for sure is that the younger you are that you go through puberty, the harder it is on your mental health. Um, and so children at a very, very young age going through puberty might not be able to fully understand all the changes that their body is going through. And when you couple that with the age um, in which they are then being exposed to things like potential internet exposure and social exposures, um, definitely we want to try to get to the bottom of why our children are going through puberty earlier. Um, talk about it. It's definitely an area that deserves more research um, and consideration. So I just want to finish out this talk and talk about what should you do if you think that your child is going through puberty early and what are some signs of early puberty? So puberty can start off with changes in hair. So either pubic hair or underarm hair. Um, you might notice that your child is sweating more or has an, an odor when they're working out. 
Typically for young boys, puberty starts with testicular enlargement um, and for young girls starts with breast bud enlargement. So if you're seeing any of these signs, you know, changes in their odor, breast bud enlargement, testicular enlargement, um, pubic hair or hair under their armpits, and you have concerns about the age of your child and when they're going through these changes, I would really recommend that you make an appointment with your pediatric doctor. Depending on your child's age, they may actually recommend a workup. Your child may need medical treatment depending on what that workup shows. So I hope you guys found this um, today's topic interesting. I certainly did. Thanks, Dr. Amy, for the shout out. I hope this answers some of the questions that you all had. If you have any questions, please leave them below. I'd love to hear what you all think about what's going on. Thank you for watching the Beehive Doc Talks with Dr. Blair Rolnick. For more episodes and her practice, visit BeKindPediatrics.com and don't forget to subscribe for more parenting tips wherever you get your podcasts. This information is for educational purposes only. It is not medical advice. Always seek medical advice from a qualified physician.